Lads, the Seattle Storm are screwed. They are absolutely, absolutely screwed, lad. The Seattle Storm, once a shining example of excellence in the Dolly NBA, with stars like Sue Bird, Lauren Jackson, and Brianna Stewart, is now grappling with serious internal issues. Allegations of harassment and bullying have emerged, targeting the coaching staff led by head coach Noel Quinn. Several players have spoken out, triggering an investigation that could shake the team's reputation and bring new attention to how professional sports address internal disputes. The legacy of this iconic franchise now hangs in the balance. Not looking good for the Storm, and it's really not looking good for Neko Wumake or the WNBA Players Association. So it says here, the Storm are being investigated for alleged player mistreatment. This isn't just another sports controversy. It's a game-changing moment that could ripple across the entire WNBA. With stars like Neka Ogwamike playing key leadership roles and rising talent Caitlin Clark having her own tense encounters with the Storm, the stakes are higher than ever. Will this investigation reveal deeper flaws in the team's structure, or could it spark a complete overhaul and fresh start? As rumors swirl, could these revelations reshape not just the Storm, but the entire league? In this video, we'll break down the Seattle Storm's current crisis and explore why it might be the most pivotal chapter in their history. Don't forget to hit subscribe and let's dive in. I'm hearing more and more rumors that Noel Quinn or coaches were allegedly abusive towards staff and players alike, threatened a player, creating a hostile environment for players, caused division amongst players, called players slurs, B word dumb, and all kinds of other abusive terms. Here was so Brad, the president tickets out. The Seattle Storm, once celebrated for their strength and success, now faces intense scrutiny, but not for their on-court triumphs. Allegations of harassment and bullying from multiple players have shifted the spotlight onto the team's coaching staff, sparking a formal investigation that's been underway for over two weeks. At the center of the controversy is head coach Noel Quinn, a respected figure with a storied career as both player and coach. However, troubling claims have emerged, painting a picture of practices and game day pressures that blurred the line between tough leadership and toxicity. Some players reported feeling singled out, creating an atmosphere of fear and unease. This goes beyond Quinn's actions, raising deeper questions about the team's overall culture and its ability to manage internal conflicts. How did management fail to address or prevent such issues from escalating? The investigation has become a turning point, not just for the Storm, but also for the Dowdy NBA, as it examines the balance between demanding excellence and safeguarding player well-being. Confirm with certainty the situation is not good. Also heard there are few layers to it. We're knowing the Storm organization doesn't receive a lot of scrutiny by fans and media, which contributed to years of malpractice being covered up. The fallout from the ongoing investigation into the Seattle Storm's internal issues could have lasting consequences. The WNBPA, while acknowledging the investigation, has stayed largely silent, facing the delicate task of supporting its players while navigating the complexities of internal accountability. Meanwhile, fans and analysts are left questioning what this means for the Storm's future and the integrity of the Dowdy NBA as a whole. This turmoil didn't appear out of nowhere. The retirement of icons like Sue Bird and the departure of Brianna Stewart created a leadership gap that some believe allowed tensions to grow unchecked. Without the steadying influence of veteran leaders, younger players reportedly found it difficult to raise concerns. At the same time, the coaching staff's methods went unchallenged leaving a team that seemed strong on the surface, but was unraveling behind the scenes. Now, all eyes are on the Storm and the WNBA to see how they respond to these revelations and whether meaningful changes will follow. I'm hearing certain players were also involved in this coach's click and that a front office executive was in the know and one player almost came to blows with a coach. So basically, I don't know who this person is, but the fact is, is that obviously this is now going to be an investigation. New reports reveal that the investigation into the Seattle Storm stems from multiple player accounts, highlighting a broader, more troubling pattern within the team's culture. These aren't isolated complaints, but signs of deeper systemic issues. As details slowly emerge, the focus has shifted to accountability. Who in the team's leadership knew about these problems? And why were they allowed to persist? The fallout could extend beyond the Storm, potentially reshaping how the entire Dowdy NBA prioritizes player well-being. The investigation raises pressing questions. How deep does this go? Can the Storm recover and rebuild their reputation? Or will the damage leave a lasting mark on their legacy? If you've stayed with us this far, don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on notifications to stay updated on this developing story. Now, let's dive back into the details. It says here, per multiple sources, WNBA 
BPA president Nekawumke was excluded from players only meetings due to a fear of um, of uh, partiality to the coaching staff. Skyler Diggins led several outbursts laced with vulgarity directed at teammates. When leadership falters, small cracks can grow into major fractures. And for the Seattle Storm, those fractures are now fault lines. The scrutiny surrounding head coach Noel Quinn has extended to leadership both on and off the court, drawing attention to the complex dynamics within the team. Nika Ogwumike, president of the Women's National Basketball Players Association, WNBPA, and a player for the Storm, seemed uniquely positioned to bridge gaps and advocate for athletes. However, her dual role became increasingly complicated. Reports surfaced that some players felt uneasy voicing concerns with Nika present, fearing her perceived alignment with the coaching staff over the players. This tension undermined the trust expected of someone representing athlete interests. The divide became glaring when news broke that players were holding meetings without Nika, signaling a breakdown in locker room cohesion. For fans, this was a turning point. A once-united team now seemed deeply fractured, with the unit's most respected figures caught in a turmoil. A franchise once known for its unity and strength is now under a cloud of mistrust leaving its future and legacy uncertain. It's now clear why the Storm did not achieve success in envisioned the start of the season. Clear dysfunction and feeling of distrust led to players-only meetings to discuss alleged mistreatment without Neko Wumake in attendance due to fear of partiality to the coaching staff. Multiple sources confirmed to circling Seattle sports. Um, central to the allegations, the absent leadership on the court and the sidelines, which has been in question since the departure of franchise cornerstone Sue Bird and Brianna Stewart. Skylar Diggin smith played a key role in the Storm's recent season, known for her fierce competitiveness. However, her leadership style wasn't without controversy. Reports came out about her harsh outbursts during practice, where she criticized teammates in a way that only added tension to the already charged atmosphere. While some players appreciated her passion and drive, others found it difficult to handle the intense pressure she created. It wasn't just leadership. It often felt divisive. Okay, by now I'm sure you've seen Skylar Diggins assault, assault. Uh, Caitlin Clark after Indiana blew out Seattle. Diggin Smith's controversial moment came to a head during a heated game against Caitlin Clark, the rising star of the league. In a tense on-court incident, Smith bumped into Clark, and the moment was caught on camera, quickly going viral on social media. Fans saw it as a veteran player challenging the new generation, with many believing Smith wasn't ready to make space for the future stars of the league. Meanwhile, Clark stayed calm and focused. The scene highlighted the growing tension between the established players and the younger talents, reflecting the deeper struggles within the Storm and the Doughty NBA as a whole. The season showed a team under pressure, struggling to reconcile their ambitions with their reality. It was clear the Storm needed more than just strategic changes. They needed a turning point. The question was, would they find the leadership and unity to bounce back next season, or would this moment mark the beginning of a decline for the team? That you bumper! And then you have the audacity to complain about them? Just play ball. You didn't hear Indiana crying when they started off one and nine. They just got up off the mat and started, that's assault. The Seattle Storm faced a tough road ahead after a season filled with controversy, leadership issues, and a disappointing playoff run. While an investigation into player mistreatment was still underway, the team knew they needed to act fast to regain the trust of fans and players alike. The challenge wasn't just about fixing the team's immediate problems. It was about rethinking their entire approach to leadership and performance. The offseason became a time for deep reflection and planning. Many analysts believed change was coming, with the coaching staff likely to see a shakeup. Head coach Noel Quinn's position was under heavy scrutiny, and rumors about potential replacements or shifts in responsibilities grew louder. The big question was whether the storm would bring in a fresh perspective to energize the team or stick with their current leadership in hopes of finding stability. What I don't get is the Seattle coach here is the one complaining after the game and Skyler, tears in her eyes being like, how dare Caitlin embarrass me? How dare they beat us by 30? The offseason was set to be a critical moment for the storm, with talks of trades, coaching changes, and a potential shift in the team's identity kicking center stage. Fans were torn between hope and uncertainty about what the future held. The Storm needed to make bold moves, not only to secure their legacy, but to lead by example in the league. The key question was whether they could come back as a stronger contender, 
or if the road to recovery would turn out to be more difficult than they anticipated. Love it. This league doesn't know what to do with Caitlin Clark. They don't know what to do with the Indiana Fever. It's not just her, Aaliyah Boston, Mitchell Hull. This team is coming together and Caitlin Clark is loving it. She's laughing at you, Sky. While the Seattle Storm struggled with internal issues and controversy, the Indiana Fever were rising as an example of resilience and progress. The Fever's transformation stood in sharp contrast to the Storm's challenges. It wasn't just their impressive performance on the court that grabbed attention. It was how they built a solid foundation based on unity, strong leadership, and a clear vision for the future. There's something about the way she plays the game, her passing, her shooting, that people really identify with. So I really feel like we're poised and we're set up for a, a great, successful next era of Fever basketball. Under the leadership of President Kelly Krakow, who returned to steer the franchise back to success, the Indiana Fever showed what strong, inclusive leadership could accomplish. General Manager Amber Cox played a key role in this turnaround, bringing fresh ideas and a steadfast commitment to building a united team. These strategic moves helped create an environment where players could thrive both individually and as part of the whole. At the heart of the Fever's revival was superstar Caitlin Clark, whose record-breaking debut season brought an exciting new energy to the team. But beyond her impressive stats, it was Clark's approach to the game and her relationships with teammates that truly set the Fever apart. She struck a perfect balance between personal excellence and a team-first attitude, something the Storm had struggled to maintain. He just absolutely did it all and became a, a magnet for attention and an, uh, an icon for sports fans, certainly little girls, certainly mine as well, playing her basketball and watching her play. The Fever's success wasn't just about star players like Caitlin Clark. It was about their entire roster. Key contributors such as Alia Boston, Lexi Hull, and Kelsey Mitchell thrived in a culture built on support, open communication, and flexibility. This approach stood in stark contrast to the Storm's internal struggles, where reports of closed-door meetings and rising tensions suggested a lack of trust among players and coaches. Fans and analysts quickly noticed the difference. The Fever weren't just winning games, they were building real momentum fueled by a combination of talent and strategic leadership. They demonstrated what a truly unified team could achieve, one that played for each other, with an administration focused on transparency, accountability, and collaboration. This strong supportive culture allowed the fever to grow both on and off the court. Meanwhile, Seattle seemed to have lost that same sense of shared vision. While the storm struggled to recover from their challenges and considered major changes, Indiana's steady rise showed how a player-focused, intentional management style could transform a team's fortunes. The comparison didn't go unnoticed across the league. As Seattle wrestled with its turmoil, the Fever's commitment to a brighter future stood as a powerful example of how fostering a supportive, collaborative environment can lead to lasting success, not just for one season, but for the long-term growth of a franchise.